In this video, I'm gonna go over nuclear tech mod updates mainly from these four categories that you can see on the top of your screen here along with the timestamps. Now radars and missiles, they got changed in the last update, especially the radars as we have screens now which can remotely control the radars and yeah, the missiles also have a texture change. Along with all of this are many of the processing and the energy machine upgrades, so I'm gonna cover all of them. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Starting this video with radar and radar screens. Radars are drastically different now as they can be linked to machines like the missile launcher, artillery guns and radar screen. In order to access this GUI, we go inside the radar, press the switch view button and that will bring up the secondary GUI where you can use the radar linker in order to link these machines to the radar. It also has an internal buffer for power as there is a very good chance that this radar will be sitting on top of some hill while you are going to access it using the screen in your bunker. The range which will be shown remains the same, 1000 blocks in each direction. Right now I am sitting at 0, 0. So yeah, 1000 blocks in each direction will be shown. There is a toggle option for detecting artillery shells now, but the most interesting one out of all of these toggle options is the map view. So if I click on show map, then it will generate a map around the entire area that the radar is placed the unloaded chunks will be black and the loaded chunks will be shown right here. So this is the map view and this bright green spot that you can see here is the relative position of that tall tower. Behind me is a village which can be seen right here. So basically if you are facing north then yeah these positions will be easy to determine. And here we have the desert temple which will be very useful for our testing. And all of these black part that you see basically they are unloaded chunks so if i go to an unloaded chunk right now and i stay there for a while in order to load it up and now if i go back then once again the map view will update and some of the blocks will be shown now because those chunks or basically those blocks are counted as loaded so that's the map view for the radar which is pretty useful now let's talk about the radar screen which can be used to remotely access the radar. Shift right clicking with the radar linker and then placing that radar linker in the radar will link the screen and now it works as a secondary radar. So I can access the screen anywhere in my world. Now the radar for in order to work it needs an altitude of Y50 to Y128. While we are going to sit in an underground bunker so the screen can be down there and the radar can be up on a hill somewhere. That is why the internal buffer for power is important. And you can do everything on the screen that the radar has to offer. So next up let's start with missiles. The tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 missiles have received a visual update but in general every missile will fly faster now. So they have increased speeds especially the anti-ballistic missile. Looks way cooler but it now flies 4 times faster. So it can intercept missiles from a basically far away distance as it can detect missiles in a 1000 block area or basically region. So these are the tier 2 missiles and finally for the tier 3 missiles we have all four right here and they have this cool looking pattern on them and insignia and yeah that's the tier 1, tier 2 and the tier 3 missiles with their visual updates. So now let's actually test these missiles and uh, the anti-ballistic missile. So I'm gonna get an infinite missile set up here in this launch pad. The target is going to be that desert temple we have. And as soon as the missile is launched, it will actually render on the screen smoothly as the missile flies and it hits the target. So there we go. It's an EMP missile, so it will do no block damage. But yeah, now let's try the same thing with anti-ballistic missile. I am going to link this missile launcher with the anti-ballistic missile to the radar. Placing it in the first slot means that by pressing the 1 key on the number pad will launch the anti-ballistic missile. So I am going to place my cursor on the flying missile, the EMP missile and press 1 which will launch the anti-ballistic missile and it will destroy that missile. Now you can also use this in order to launch missile to any position you want without actually placing any coordinates in there. So this concrete cracker will go wherever I want it to go. 
So basically by placing the cursor on the radar, you can target artillery or missile right there. So I'm going to link this artillery turret and in the third position and now firing a nuclear shell on that second temple right there and the temple is gone. In a similar manner, we can use the factory artery, artillery turret and that will destroy this temple that remains here. So yeah, that's the radar and how you can link artillery and missiles to it in order to launch them. Next up, the combustion generator has been replaced with the wood burning generator. It has a 300% efficiency for logs and it can also burn fluids but only at a 50% efficiency rate. So basically, if I connect it to a storage block right here, place some logs in there, it will start producing 2000 Hg per second. So yeah, that's the early game. And yeah, wood ash will be a byproduct of all of the logs and wood that you burn. Turbo fans efficiency or basically the afterburner efficiency has been increased. So efficiency one will provide 2.6 times, efficiency two will be five times and efficiency three will be eight times or afterburner one, two and three, sorry. Meanwhile, the flash stacks efficiency, the base efficiency has been decreased. So yeah, it will not produce as much power at it as it used to before. So that's the turbo fan and the flash stack. Coming up next, we have the industrial generator, which now has three input ports on the bottom side, which can be used to provide it with heating oil, engine lubricant and water, three fluids which are important in order for it to run the most efficiently. So we can place it on a high enough structure, leaving the bottom blocks open and then we can run a piping down there in order to supply it continuously with these three fluids and yeah, making sure that it runs at its max efficiency. Another important change, the cyclotron. Now the cyclotron has input ports on all of the sides, three input ports, the red, green and blue, which will connect it to yeah the internal three ports that the cyclotron has. So I have led a one is to three splitter, which will split the basically input into three equal parts. And now these inputs, the polonium will be deposited equally inside the cyclotron, as you can see here. So automating the cyclotron is much easier now. Next up, light oil and cracked light oil. It can be converted into high amounts of aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, aromatic hydrocarbons can be made into solvent, which is pretty important, or even TNT and solid fuel. And the same thing will go for coker fluid, as it can be converted back into aromatic hydrocarbon. Cracked light oil is the same story as the normal light oil, and you can get a lot of aromatic hydrocarbon from it. So that's that. Now, coal bedrock ore will give us more deposit, basically double. So eight coal ore every time an operation is complete. So here I have placed the drill with speed three upgrade. And as you can see for our first operation, we will get eight pieces of coal. And if this process continues, we will keep on getting coal in increments of eight. So here we have 16 and 24. So yeah, double output for coal for your thermal power plant. Hematite and malachite will now only yield one ingot. So yeah, that value has been taken down, but apparently there's even bedrock ores for them now. I don't remember if there was bedrock ores for hematite and malachite before. Now the coker unit can convert red mud, one bucket of red mud into one ingot of iron. Red mud, by the way, can be obtained when you are processing aluminum from bauxite. So yeah. Now let's talk about latex. Latex will replace insulators in many recipes. So it can be made by pressing jungle wood. And uh, yeah, you can then smelt this in order to obtain latex bar, which will replace and will be used in a lot of recipes. The conveyor belts, siren, muffler, gun repair kit, and uh, yeah, even a lot of armors like the T45 and the liquidator suit. So that's latex. Next up, we have the paint soybility. Killing mobs with like chainsaw now or the pen soybility will give you nitra and nitra can be combined in order to make a big piece of nitra and this can be used to craft ammunition so here you can see all of the different recipes which nitra will give 
and it will it can also make steam pack actually so yeah pretty helpful in combat so that's nitra for you now next up we have plastic bag it can store a single item and that's it yeah pretty useful stuff from nuclear tech mod you can carry your radioactive items in this yeah peak engineer gaming so that's the plastic bag and for mobs we have pigeons which will spawn in the plains biome so this is not the biome for them but sometimes they will also fly and apparently this one loves the radar very much get out there next up if you kill them they will drop feathers and some raw meat so that's the pigeon now the trench master armor is unbreakable it will also ignore any self-inflicted explosion damage but knockback yeah knockback will still apply and finally to make the particle accelerator crafting easier there is the dense wire recipe which can be used to make all of the magnets required for the particle accelerator and this will simplify stuff for the particle accelerator a lot dense wire as you can see can be used to make dense magnets finally all of the battery storage blocks can only output what like five percent of their five percent of their capacity per tick so basically that's the same output as their capacity because five percent is one by twenty per tick is times twenty so twenty by twenty is one so they will output exactly what their capacity is 50 million capacity it will output 50 million per second so yeah that's the basically transfer limit i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it was a bit fast but there were a lot of updates to cover if you did please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this i will see you guys in the next one peace out my guys and stay safe